Hello guys, I'm Juan Gea from Bone Studio and today it's another tutorial day. We are going to continue with our principal Seder tutorial series. In the last video we saw how can we uh, recreate a transmissive material, some glass or plastic material, transparent material. And today we are going to look into the cloth material and the subsurface scattering material. Let's go to it. Let me remove this. I'm going to create my preview window. And here we are. Okay. So to create this cloth material, it's, it's really easy, it's pretty easy. We have our principal seeder and the only thing I had to do is to define a base color and uh, that's it, we have our cloth. Now, we need the, the, to use the scene property of the principal seeder. If we put this scene property at zero, we get a normal standard opaque dielectric material. But if we put this scene at one, that is the maximum value you can put there uh, manually, this way, with the mouse, I mean, the effect is pretty low. So uh, to potentiate, to increase this effect, we can write here 10, for example, and then we have this characteristical falloff that we get in the, in the clothes materials, in the clothing materials. There is another property of scene here that is scene tint. This tint is useful to tint a bit this falloff instead of being a white falloff, we can tint it a bit so it mixes better with the with the clothing and it uses the base color to tint this scene you can see here we can use it a tiny bit and that's it then we have our clothing material now let's complicate a bit more this this material we're going to use a cloth a fabric a fabric uh, texture here we have fabrics I'm going to use a Blender Cloud texture. Come on, refresh. Okay, the, the fabric solid 20, for example. Uh, let me add it here. Image texture. And I have it here. Okay. And I'm going to use as bump. So go to the material tab and be sure that displacement is configured as bump. So we have it here. And since this texture has color, I'm going to remove this color. Color, hue, saturation, no, not alpha, color, and saturation at zero. Now, if I connect this to displacement, I get this bump, okay? But uh, there is a problem. This bump destroys the, the scene effect. So what I can do is to lower the value of the texture so I get less bump, for example, 0.1, I still can see the, the fabric texture, but I get less bumps, so the scene effect is, is, still, is still present. Okay, and now let's go, into, let's go to complicate a bit more the, the cloth. Let's go to, to recreate a wet cloth, for example. So let me remove the bump for a minute. And we can play with the specular value, with the specular chain, and with, and with the roughness value. For example, we have our cloth. We are going to remove the scene for a moment. We are going to use the specular value. So we have here some kind of plasticky object, 0.4, for example. And we are going to give a bit of roughness. That's okay. And now we restore our scene. So let's configure this to 10. And uh, let's just uh, refine because uh, there is a lot of noise right now. But here you can see more or less the, the, the wet aspect of the cloth. So we can increase this specular bit more, for example. And let's leave it to refine. Here you can see the, 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 reflective, the reflective effect, like a wet cloth. So now we can reconnect again our displacement or bump Let's go to see in this part. And we have some kind of wet cloth. Of course, you can use masks, you can use uh, add textures to, to achieve this. Okay, that's it for the cloth. It's pretty easy. One tree, for example. And with wrongness, for example. Okay, it's, it's pretty easy. Now, let's go to check this material. I'm really amazed on about the, the principle said on how 
easy is to configure subsurface scattering with the principal shader. Usually subsurface scattering is something difficult to configure correctly because it, 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 it has a lot, of, a lot of little things that you have to take into account. But in this case, it's really, really easy. Let me uh, explain. I, I used here the same color for the subsurface and the base color. And this is for a reason you are going to see now. Let me remove the specular, the wrongness, and here we have the subsurface value to one, and that's it. We have the subsurface scattering effect ready to go. But now we have uh, another option. Uh, you have to take into account that the subsurface value at one uses the subsurface color, and the subsurface value at zero gives us a standard dielectric material that uh, will be a standard opaque material. But if we mix this color, for example, let me configure this to blue, and we use a 0.5 in the subsurface scattering, we get a mixture of both colors, okay? This is important so you don't get crazy when you see where it affects. It's, it's because this is a mixture of, of both colors. You have to, to take this into account. Now, we have another option that is subsurface radius. What is this setting? This setting is not X, Y, and C, but it's the the energy that the light will have to, no, the, the distance, sorry, the distance the light will penetrate our surface. So for example, if I, uh, let me put this color again at the same color. If I configure this to zero, okay, zero, it's exactly the same that putting the subsurface effect at zero. No matter, there's no difference between zero and one. If I configure this to one, I get my subsurface scattering, but if I want to exaggerate this effect, if I want to, to make this scattering bigger, what I can do to, to configure this to 10, for example, and now I get some kind of, 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 of super waxy, super soft surface. Okay, now bear in mind that this, these values are RGB. So for example, if I configure this a pure red color with no green and no blue, we get this horrible picture, okay, bear with me with, with this. If I put this to zero, the red value, we get no subsurface scattering. No matter if I put this to zero, if I put this to 100, there is no effect because my color is completely red. So let's go to this and let's restore more logical and more logical value. Okay, now we can uh, increase the, the complexity of this of this material. We can add some kind of a specular reflection. Uh, so no, 0.3, it's okay. And some roughness. Uh, 0.5, for example. And here we have some kind of uh, waxy material with the subsurface scattering value. Okay. Now, let me check if, if we have time. Yeah, we have time. We are going to review one last material that we have here. That is this volumetric material. As I said in the first video, the principal shader cannot do any kind of volumetric effect. So to do this, uh, what I did is to use the standard volumetric volume uh, shaders in, in Blender. So it's, it's a pretty simple shader. I use the, the volume scatter shader. Let me put this at one because it, this this is the value of one to get this kind of soft volume effect and i use the volume absorption uh, shader to get this color so if i mix those two shaders and go to 0.5 i get this soft kind of, of uh, cloudy cloudy effect cloudy volume if i change for example this color to red i get this red uh, red cloud and that's it. it it's, it's so simple. Then connect the mix to body volume, and that's it. We have our volume. So that's it for today. I hope you liked the video. The principal shader is really the, the, a really powerful over shader. I, I think it's the best over shader I saw in in different 3D 3D packages. Okay. Uh, it's not the most powerful in regards to the features because you can do you can't do volumetric effects, but it is pretty simple 
to use and you can achieve really good results with very little work. So that's it for today. If you liked the video, please press the like button, subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this in Spanish or English, and see you in the next video, guys. Bye!